I don't know how, but I recorded 27 and 26 out of order. So I don't know how that's going to make them show up on the playlist, but you'll know which one to click. Um, 26. The Blind Leading the Blind. You're nuts, Serena exclaimed. Absolutely insane. Thanks for your confidence, Natalie said. Look, if I'm not back in two hours, go ahead and tell somebody, okay? Leaving the dorm was not hard. A lot of kids went places after dinner. Natalie simply headed down the driveway, hoping that no one would stop and ask her what she was doing out so late. If they did, she'd tell them she was on her way to the library and got lost. She knew a lot depended on luck. Only one car passed on her way to, to the driveway, and it didn't stop. At Dunbar, Natalie turned left and let her... Cain followed the edge of the grass, shorelining up, shorelining up the hill. At the intersection, she pressed the button and waited for traffic in front of her to stop. Her heart was already thumping double time. She forced herself to listen carefully. She was so focused. She was so focused this time that she even heard the click of the traffic light changing. It was just past rush hour, so there wasn't a lot of traffic on Dunbar. The cars in front of her came to a halt, while cars to her right began moving. She didn't hesitate. If she started thinking about it too much, she would, ch she would chicken out. Quickly, she tapped three times in front of her and headed out across the street. When she got to the other side, she, um, she heaved a sigh of relief, but kept moving up Dunbar, past the barking dog. When she heard the voices approaching, she kept to the left, keeping the arc of her cane as narrow as possible and walking with as much confidence as she could muster. Good evening, someone said. It was a man's voice. He sounded older, educated, like a nice person. Natalie had to judge quickly. She nodded. Good evening, she replied, continuing on her way. When she heard his voice moving further away, she continued forward again, tripping over the same darn crack in the sidewalk. A whap against the utility box told her, she practically made it. So far, so good, she thought. Unbelievable. Natalie con couldn't help but smile. The supermarket was busy. Natalie could hear the jangle of metal carts being pushed over the pavement and smelled the exhaust from cars moving slowly past her. She moved her cane carefully, but still managed to bump into something. A new paper box? A young woman offered her help. No, thank you, Natalie said. I'm fine. Past the liquor store, she heard the rattle of bottles. The nail salon would be next. Yes, the smell of wet polish. Then the raven's nest bar. Natalie could hear country music and smelled cigarette and smelled acrid cigarette smoke. Two men, it sounded like they were outside the bar, were coughing and laughing. There would be two more storefronts before the Parthenon. A bench was to the right of the door. Natalie found the bench, then opened the door. Pizza never smelled so good, she thought. Inside the restaurant, she stood 
unsure of what to do next. Bree? Bree? She called out softly. Natalie, I'm here. In front, near a window. Keep talking, Natalie said. Here, I'm here, standing now. I'm tapping on the table. Natalie heard the tap, tap, tap. When she got to Bree, the two girls embraced, and Bree squeezed Natalie's hand. Thank you so much, she said. I knew you could do it. All right. Natalie was in no mood for chit-chat. She knew that probably a good 30 or 40 minutes had passed. Here's what I think. Here's what I think we ought to do. Let me sweep my cane, and then you hold my left elbow so we can do sighted guide. I mean, we can't have two canes going out there at the same time. Fine, Bree said. My bill's paid. Let's go. Excuse me, a woman's voice. Close to them, the waitress. Do you girls want me to call a cab or something? Natalie had not even considered that possibility. I have like two dollars left, Bree said. Natalie patted her pockets. She hadn't even brought a purse. I don't have any money at all, she said, suddenly regretting it. A cab would have been a good idea. But which cab company to call? She'd overheard Miss Karen talking about cabs one day. How she always used the same company and asked for Ben or Jerry because she knew they wouldn't cheat her. But Natalie wouldn't have a clue what cab company to call. We'll be fine, thanks. Oh, we'll be fine, Natalie said. Thanks. We don't have to go far. We don't have far to go. You sure? The young woman sounded concerned. I can call the school for you. No, Natalie re- No, Natalie responded. Please, don't. We're supposed to be doing this on our own. Really, it is no problem, <laughs> she assured her. Right. The smell of beer and smoke quickly identified the bar as the girls headed back down the sidewalk. Hey, looky there. Hey, looky there. A man's loud, husky voice. Where are you two girls headed? Judging from the sound of his voice, Natalie figured he was standing in the do- the bar's doorway. The girls ignored the question and walked by. That there, the man joked, is the blind leading the blind. He and another man laughed heartily. Cruel comment, but it was true, wasn't it? It was the blind leading the blind, and they were doing just fine. In front of the supermarket, Natalie bumped into an empty cart and set it rolling. She tried to reach out and stop it, but it got away from her, and she had to let it go, but cringed when she heard it smash into something. At the entrance to the shopping center, the two girls turned right and walked several blocks down Dunbar. Traffic was light now, almost no cars at all, which not only meant rush hour was over, but that it was getting dark out. Natalie slowed down as she listened. Then she had a bad feeling and stopped. What is it? Bree asked. Shh, she said. Be quiet. A truck with something rattling in its cargo bay passed them on Dun- on Dunbar. The sound dissipated as the truck continued down the road. For a while, nothing. Nothing more until from behind them, a cough broke the silence. Then, Natalie thought she could smell cigarette smoke. She swallowed hard and felt. 
in her jacket pocket for a cell phone, knowing that up ahead was the long, quiet street near the cemetery. Natalie, what's wrong? Bree asked again. Let's keep moving, Natalie whispered. I think someone's coming behind us.